Hi, I'm Natasha Khan, Bat for Lashes, and this is what's in my shopping bag. I think this is the most exciting thing I found in the store. It's like Teen Wolf action figures, but you can get one in a basketball outfit. Or with his cool school uniform on. You look good now. Thinking about this new album, I guess there's a lot of that inspiration and cinematic stuff. But yeah, Teen Wolf with all the like arpeggiated synth sounds and a man like transforming into a wolf is pretty inspirational. <laughs> This was something else I got very excited about. It looks probably from a distance like it's just vinyl, but it's a jigsaw of Madonna's True Blue record. And this was the first album I bought um, with my mum. I was obsessed with Madonna. I just remember her wearing like tight pants and flat shoes and having like the blonde hair. Yeah, I just remember thinking she was like the best style icon ever. Well, The Craft. This is one of my favorite films as, a, as like a young girl. Girls, watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. Hello, Mr. I just thought this was like so fun. All the, all the light as a feather, stiff as a board. Did they do that? Yeah. I was convinced at age 15 that I could talk to Kurt Cobain if I put my green like woolly cardigan on and lay down in the, on the patio in the garden that I could communicate to him through the stars and stuff. So I love films like this because it's like we're all witches, we can all do this stuff. Did he ever talk back, Kurt Cobain? I think he talked back, <laughs> I mean I guess he talked back in terms of inspiration and I learned a lot from him early on about like DIY, punk rock, you know, just doing your own thing. He did a lot of drawing and so did I. I think he inspired me to start doing poetry books when I was really young. So I had books and reams and reams of poems and I definitely, you know, have him to thank for that. Um, Lost Highway, David Lynch. <laughs> Angelo Badlamenti and I love people that do scores for films. I find that cinematic scores and film music to me are just as inspiring or if not more than other bands or other musicians. Just because when I'm writing an album I see characters in my mind, I create myths, I create landscapes and colours and they're all living in this place and doing these things and I have David Lynch to thank for a lot of that because I feel like in his work he leaves so much space and there's so much atmosphere and so much that's unsaid, which leaves a lot of room for music, musical interpretation. He kind of does stuff that I feel is like a meditation on moving image. I think where music and image cross, like he's a master of that with who he collaborates with and so is Steven Spielberg with John Williams. Which takes me on to E.T. because I went to the Hollywood Bowl last year to see John Williams and Steven Spielberg came out on stage and they did a thing where Steven Spielberg would show a scene from like Raiders of the Lost Ark or E.T. or one of his classic films. They'd show it on a screen with no music and he was like, so this is like what we shot and this was our opening sequence and you'll see how, like really I'm quite bad at making films until John Williams comes along and makes it amazing. And it's true, when you watch it with no sound and it's just like them talking and it's kind of like, okay, this is cool. Tell me when it's over! But then they'd replay it with John Williams conducting a live orchestra you can see how talented John Williams is and what a collab. They've made these films together, really. Do 
Just Kids, one of my favourite books to read. I remember reading it and I was in New York um, and I burst into tears on the subway at the end. I was inconsolable. I closed my eyes and folded my hands. Providence determined how I would say goodbye. Again, it's about collaboration. That's Maybe that's the theme of today. It's just the story of both of these people that didn't really know who they were when they moved to New York. They were, they were trying to find themselves creatively. And there was so much unconditional love and support for each other's journey. You know, like he's taking photographs of her. She's playing down at like crappy venues in, in New York. And I love Patti Smith. I love the way she writes. It's so raw and visceral and she's such a genuine person. And I understood that in this small space of time, we had mutually surrendered our loneliness and replaced it with trust. So The Cure, this is my favorite Cure album, Disintegration. I will always love you. I will always love you. For me, it was the soundtrack to being like a gothy, emotional teenager, but also being in England, in rainy England, you know, and grey skies and lonely suburbia was where I grew up. And there are a gang of us sort of misfit kids that loved the cure and we went to try and see them. I think I've seen them eight times. We went everywhere, followed them all over. And I loved Robert Smith's singing voice. I remember when I was learning about expressing emotions through singing, just through trial and error. I would listen a lot to Björk doing the Sugar Cubes and him in The Cure because they sort of sound like feral animals. They're kind of yelping and, and like squealing and screeching and it's like this beautiful liberation through the voice. And I love the way Robert Smith sings in an English accent and I always vowed to myself that I would never sing in an American accent because like, I was just like, I'm going to sing like I'm British. Bowie. Oh, so heavy. <laughs> I just really love a hologram. <laughs> what a legend. David Bowie and Kate Bush, for me, are like the two sort of theatrical parents that I never had. <laughs> the artist is there to um, elevate us from, the, from everyday life. And I feel like David Bowie and Kate Bush, to me, used costume, ballet, dance, film, pop music. You know, they just used all the possible avenues to, to weave these incredible narratives and stories and characters. And I think that that is one of the most powerful ways of communicating and bringing people together in sort of, especially in times that are a bit crazy like now. I miss these types of people, so he's awesome. I found the tiniest tape player, <laughs> tape cassette player you could possibly find because I put the new album has come out on the Lost Girls cassette tape and I got to hand draw the um, track listing on the back and draw little like diamonds and hearts and pine trees and like all the things that I would have done as a teenager because to me making mixtapes was like the most romantic thing you could do or the most loving thing you could do for someone and so I, I love the idea that I could listen to my new album on this tape player. Horror films. So this is the first horror film I saw when I, I think I was like nine or ten at my friend who was supposed to be babysitting me's house. She was making out with her boyfriend in the bedroom and they left me to watch this on my own in the dark and I think it's the most terrified I've ever been. <laughs> What I love about it is that it's so grainy and sort of handheld and shittily made that it, it feels more real. It's not slick at all. And I, I haven't rewatched it recently, but it's burned into my memory of this girl just, you know, s screaming on the back of the, the van at the end of the film. She just like lost her mind. <laughs> I think horror is a really interesting way of using storytelling and things we're frightened of to address a lot of social issues like Get Out by um, Jordan Peele or Hereditary by Ari Aster. Horrors that are getting us to think about mental illness and the shadow of society, you know, like the things we don't want to look at but wrapped up in a kind of heightened fantastical story. So I, I love that and I always remember reading about Jaws and Steven Spielberg, which is kind of what this is like the premise of a lot of horror films is that 
there's this relentless predator that's chasing you and that taps into something very deep in us because we're wired to be scared of predators. So I just think this is one of the scariest films ever made. And I love a big t-shirt. Tuck it into your jeans, looks cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you so very much. My pleasure, thank you for having me.